It is my pleasure to introduce our moderator this evening, Cheryl Jennings. An Emmy Award winner, Cheryl anchors the 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. newscasts on ABC7 KGO-TV Monday through Friday. Additionally, she is the host of the Emmy Award-winning community affairs show, Beyond the Headlines, which takes an in-depth look at issues. Cheryl is also a longtime volunteer for the San Francisco League of Women Voters, moderating many of our candidate forums, and is a past recipient of the League's Women Who Could Be President Award. Please join me in welcoming Cheryl. Thanks very much, everybody. It was a little tough to get here with the traffic on the Embarcadero, so I apologize for being late. Anybody else have trouble getting here? Yes, and finding the building too? My first time here, yeah, okay. And you're a student, and you had trouble? <laughs> um, I really would like to have more questions from the audience, so look for one of our volunteers and, uh, and get one of our little cards and ask anything you want as long as you don't use profanity. And because uh, we have two incredible supervisors here tonight who have done an awful lot for San Francisco. And uh, as you know, that that's District 17, David Campos and David Chu. And uh, the candidates will answer questions that I have in my hand right now and some from me. And also questions that have been vetted by the League of Women Voters. And uh, they have uh, agreed to ask their supporters to be respectful and maintain quiet. And I ask you to do the same as well. And if you have your phones, I know you want, want to look at it, but just turn the ringer off, please so it doesn't interfere with the, uh, the video recording. Uh, you have a lot of important decisions to make on November 4th, and uh, tonight's forum will give you a chance to hear in depth from our candidates. Each, this is really nice, because usually when I moderate, the candidates get 30 seconds to a minute. So for each question, they're gonna get two and a half minutes, which is a long time, especially if you're on TV. Our stories are like 25 seconds, and our candidates know that they have to give us their best stuff in 15 seconds, so they're gonna to get to actually expand on this tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Please welcome, give a warm welcome to David Chu and David Campos. Shake hands and come out fighting, just verbally though. All right. Okay. okay, so we have a total time. I was wrong. Total time of two and a half minutes between both of you. I, I misled you, sorry about that. So here's how it works. If you haven't been to a League of Women Voters debate, we have timekeepers in the front. Ladies, if you could just raise your cards and show us where our timekeepers are. So what happens is when they hold the yellow card up, I know you've done this before, that means you have 15 seconds to finish. When they hold the red card up, that means stop. So if you could just show the audience that so they know what the candidates are looking at. Okay, here we go. First question. And we're going to begin the answer. The first person to begin will be Mr. Campos, Supervisor Campos. What legislative priority do you have that might be unpopular until you champion it? Mr. Campos. Well, I think that one of the things that we're facing in San Francisco is this uh, affordability crisis. I think it is the number one issue facing the city and county of San Francisco. We are the wealthiest city in the entire country, and at the same time, we have the fastest growing inequality. And what I have championed is efforts to actually help renters stay in San Francisco. And I'll talk specifically about my uh, relocation assistance law that was passed with a supermajority of the board to increase the amount of money for individuals who are facing LS Act evictions. Uh, before my law, the most people could get was $5,200 because of my law tens of thousands of dollars could be provided to renters to actually give them a fighting chance. And not surprisingly, the big development uh, landlord community has sued me, has sued the city on that law, but we know that in the end we will prevail because it's the right thing to do to keep moderate uh, income people living in San Francisco. All right, thank you. <laughs> Supervisor Chu. So first of all, I want to thank the League and thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, staying on the same subject of housing affordability, um, both David and I are 
are have prioritized this issue. But for David, this has been a topic that he's really just been working on this year. Um, housing affordability is something I've been fighting for for six years. I've been fighting for affordable housing for veterans, for seniors, uh, for foster youth. Um, and one of the things that I fought for, which was not popular, in fact, had been an idea that had been rejected four times over 20 years was the idea of legalizing tens of thousands of in-law units where our most vulnerable San Franciscans have lived. Uh, and after 20 years, we finally got this done. And as someone who is a tenant, as someone who is endorsed by the Community Tenant Association, someone who has really been fighting effectively and delivering for tenants as opposed to just talking about it, I think it's important as we think about who's going to represent us next in Sacramento uh, that we choose someone who knows how to build consensus to get things done and really deliver for the folks who are most vulnerable in our communities. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Next question. Looking at the San Francisco Unified School District, what things would you like to see implemented statewide, and what would you like to see changed in San Francisco? And the first question, Supervisor Chu. Well, as the first kid in my family born here in the United States, I, and I know David agrees with this, we all know how unbelievably important public education is to making sure that every San Franciscan has an opportunity to really succeed in our community. I think the number one issue facing our schools right now is the fact that California is ranked 49th out of 50 states when it comes to what we spend per kid in the classroom. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have seen massive funding cuts. In fact, since the 1970s, when both David and David, when we were growing up, um, education funding from property taxes has been slashed by 60%, in large part because of uh, Proposition 13. And Proposition 13 is something that needs to be reformed, along with other additional revenue sources so we can make sure that our kids not only have the funding they need, uh, but hopefully I hope someday we'll have universal preschool, uh, we'll have after school programs, and our higher education institutions uh, I hope will be more accessible to students all over San Francisco. Supervisor Campos. You know, notwithstanding the, the agreement that, that we were going to try to stay positive, I know that you're going to hear David trying to attack me. When you're losing in the polls, that's what you do as a candidate, unfortunately. But let me talk about our public schools, because if anyone knows our public schools, I know my public schools. I was the general counsel for the public school district for many years, and as an attorney, worked to make sure that we had the best quality education in San Francisco. I'm not just talking. We have actually done something about it, and then the mission specifically, we brought in $30 million to address what I believe is a key issue in our public school system, which is a growing achievement gap. The fact is that African American students, uh, English language learners, are being left behind in our school system. I have actually done something in San Francisco to address that issue, and I'm going to use that record to do something at the state level, which is why the teachers and all of the people who are in the business of educating people are supporting me in this campaign. Supervisor Chu. Go ahead. You want me to read the question? No, I, I think I started with the question. Okay, I mean, I, I'm sorry, I have a follow-up question for oh, both of you, okay. I apologize. Um, my follow-up question is, what, there are a lot of concerns about undocumented children and how to pay for it and whether it's right for San Francisco. So I'd like you to start with that. So as the son of immigrants who, years later, when I first came to San Francisco, I represented undocumented San Franciscans here, uh, this is something that we know as San Franciscans, this is a shared value we have of making San Francisco a city uh, that protects our immigrants. In fact, the very first civil rights lawsuit I ever worked on was to protect the rights of undocumented children in the classroom to be able to continue to be educated. This was the Prop 187 litigation from the early 1990s. Um, as a supervisor, uh, I champion our language access ordinance, which makes sure that regardless of your background, regardless of whether you're undocumented or not, you have access to city government. I also champion the right of undocumented uh, parents to be able to vote in school board elections, and I want to thank David for his support. And a few months ago, we rolled out a first-in-the-country uh, program to provide undocumented children who need representation in the courts, particularly uh, children coming from Central America, to receive pro bono assistance to do this. Uh, this is a core value of mine and something I will continue to fight for in Sacramento. Supervisor Campos. Well, I do, thank, I do thank David for supporting the efforts that I have led uh, to uh, protect the rights of 
undocumented students. Uh, this is a very personal issue for me because I actually came to this country as a child undocumented. But I think that if you look at how we have actually handled the issue of, of unaccompanied minors, you can see a difference in terms of the leadership. The $100,000 that David Chu is talking about is money that was included in the budget before the issue actually even came up. It wasn't actually targeted for uh, unaccompanied minors. The same organization that he touted as he's working with pointed out that the real solution to this crisis was the solution that I presented, $2.1 million that actually ensured new funding for legal representation. And because of that leadership, cities like New York, state of California, and other jurisdictions are followed suit. It's, some, it's one thing to talk about something, but to actually do it. The record speaks for itself. That's why the immigrant community is supporting my campaign. Right. Next question, public transportation. How did each of you get here tonight? And what are your thoughts on public transportation and charging for young people and senior citizens? Uh, Supervisor Campo, start with you. Uh, I did drive today, uh, and I have a number of meetings. But let me say this, that for me, public transportation is about making sure that there is accountability in this system. Uh, I have worked on public transportation for the last six years to make this system more reliable for citizens. And I believe that one of the things that we need to do is not just throw money at Muni, but actually change the way that it is governed. And one of the things that I'm also proud of that is that instead of just focusing on increasing service, we also have worked to make Muni more accessible to individuals. It is my law, my program, that allowed low-income and middle-income children in San Francisco to actually ride Muni for free. And we did that in response to the crisis of families leaving San Francisco. And because of that, we have actually seen an improvement in the families that can actually stay in San Francisco. Again, it's one thing to talk, it's another thing to actually act. We have acted, and I'm proud of that. So I am the candidate uh, sitting here tonight who doesn't have a car. Uh, today I got to most places on my bicycle or on my feet. I did get a ride to get over here today because this part of town is not as accessible as it needs to be. Um, we do have a system, and I will say it, I think our muni system is broken. Uh, it is dysfunctional. We need to do better. And David has, in recent years, he has served as San Francisco's representative on a transit agency. He's been the head of our transportation authority at a time when transportation has has been broken. Um, I want to uh, also say I've supported David on this concept that young low-income kids under the age of 18 ought to be able to ride Muni for free. The fact of the matter is David wasn't able to deliver results to figure out how to get this funded. It was because of the conversations I had with Google, um, a major company here in San Francisco, that we were able to get close to seven million dollars of funding over the next two years to really deliver on this idea. Again, one candidate's about talk. I've been trying to deliver results. Staying on the subject of public transportation, uh, pedestrian safety is a huge issue, uh, and bicycle safety. So since I started with Supervisor Campos last, let's start with you, Supervisor Chu. This is, as I said earlier, a very personal issue for me as someone who doesn't have a car. Most days of the week, I am on my bicycle or, uh, or walking. And in fact, just yesterday, uh, I was in the heart of Chinatown, where we had yet another pedestrian fatality involving a senior uh, who was struck and killed on the streets a few weeks ago. We have to do a better job of a city of coming together. And, uh, and part of why I'm so passionate about wanting to go to Sacramento is the state of California has cut billions of dollars a year of money to public transit. We need to make sure that we have the resources to fully fund uh, a muni system that is late 40% of the time, to make sure that our seniors and our pedestrians and our cyclists are not biking and walking on some of the most dangerous intersections in the entire state. And this is why I have championed more funding in our transit system. I do hope everyone here will be able to support propositions A and B, which I help to work on to make sure that we're getting more funding as we move forward uh, to make sure that our seniors, uh, our children, and everyone is safe on our streets. Supervisor Campos. You know, the, the thing is this, you cannot rewrite history. Facts do matter. I think that anyone who has worked on Free Muni for Youth would be shocked to see that David Chu is now actually claiming for Free Muni for Youth. Say that to the thousands of people who work with us in the funding that we got at the MTC. 
But let's be clear. Uh, we have actually both had a record in terms of bringing transportation funding to San Francisco. And as the representative, one of the representatives for San Francisco on the Metropolitan Transportation Agency here, uh, Commission here in the Bay Area, I have actually fought to bring transportation funding, millions of transportation funding to San Francisco. Again, it's one thing to talk, it's another thing to actually do something. But the point here is this, that the reason why the Sierra Club and the League of Conservation Voters are both endorsing me, and I'm only the only candidate who has that endorsement, those two endorsements, is because they know that I am going to be the best advocate for transportation at the, in the state of California. If you trust the Sierra Club, vote for David Campos. All right, um, one more question on the subject of transportation, and I'll start with you, Supervisor Campos, since I started with Supervisor Chu last time. What about high-speed rail? What are your thoughts on high-speed rail? I, I actually, I do support high-speed rail, and we actually have worked and specifically have pushed at the MTC for funding to make high-speed rail happen and to make sure that we actually make the uh, downtown extension a reality here in San Francisco. If we're going to have high-speed rail, we need to make sure that it, the system doesn't end at 4th and King, but actually goes all the way to downtown. And one of the things that I am proud of is that I actually was one of the people at the MTC who was pushing the effort for North Northern California to actually organize itself so that we could actually benefit from the benefit from the millions of dollars that the state is allocating to high-speed rail because what's happened so far is that the bulk of that money has gone to Central and Southern California. The kind of work that I have done at the MTC tells you that when I am in Sacramento, I will be able to deliver for San Francisco and our entire region. Part of the reason that I am supported by the other San Francisco representative on the MTC for this race is because my colleague, our colleague, Supervisor Scott Weiner, knows who actually has been effective at building consensus to get things done. Um, here in San Francisco, uh, I have carried the legislation to move forward the Central Subway Project, which is the first major underground north-south project that our city has had. Like David, I am a champion of high-speed rail. I think it is something we absolutely need. The real challenge is who can work with others to get things done. Since our time on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, I have passed over 105 ordinances. David has passed about a third as many. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is, only one of us sitting in front of you has actually been effective at delivering consensus on the most difficult questions of the day, whether it be creating jobs, building housing, or balancing budgets. And for me, this task of who's going to go to Sacramento to really bring back resources to San Francisco is the central one of the day, uh, and one that I think I have proven time after time again here in San Francisco. Thank you, gentlemen. I have a lot of questions about education. California is facing a serious shortage of college-educated workers. How would you improve access to higher education for California students? And Mr. Chu, I'll start with you. At the end of the day, uh, and this is something both David and David, we've both spoken about, is college education funding has been severely slashed uh, by the state of California. We've seen in the last six years about a 30% cut in budget. We need someone who can go up and really develop consensus to bring more revenues uh, to our system. I'm the one candidate here uh, who worked to put forth a business tax uh, that is bringing hundreds of millions of dollars of more revenue back to San Francisco so that we could spend it on folks who need it the most. We need someone who can go to Sacramento in a body that is 10 times the size as the San Francisco Board of Supervisors who can develop that consensus. Uh, I think it's important for someone to be able to go up and fight for changes to Prop 13. I think it's also important, I will mention, uh, that, San, that California is the only oil producing state in the country that does not have a tax on oil that would bring in billions of dollars of resources that we could spend for our students in higher education institutions, for affordable housing, as well as for transit. Supervisor Campos. 
I believe that education is the civil rights issue of the day. And I think that the reason why the California Teachers Association, the California Federation of Teachers, the faculty at uh, not only SF State, but also City College, and all the, administ all the uh, educators in California are supporting me is because they know of my commitment to education. And I believe that the reason why they're supporting me is because they know that I'm gonna make education my top priority when it comes to funding. It is shameful that we are 49th in the country in per pupil spending. It's also shameful that our Cal State system uh, is underfunded by hundreds of millions of dollars each year, that we have 20,000 uh, young people who are eligible to enroll in the Cal State system but cannot do so because the state does not have the money to do, the, to do that. And I think that as we talk about education, the other thing that we have to talk about is that we need criminal justice system reform and move away from our infatuation with building prisons. And instead of building prisons, let's use that money to fund our schools. All right, well on that note, thank you. On that note, let's talk about the state's prisoner local realignment policy and its implementation. What should we do about the prison system? Um, Supervisor Chu. started the last one. Oh, so. oh, okay, okay. go ahead, sorry. Well, I mean, I think that San Francisco, what has happened with prisoner realignment uh, and the way that San Francisco has handled that issue is a model for the rest of the country. The fact is that we have demonstrated that we can have public safety in a jurisdiction and actually have fewer people in jail or in prison. That's the reason that locally I've been f uh, leading the, the, the fight to see if we actually do need a new jail in San Francisco because I would rather use that money to actually fund our public schools than actually spend $600 million at a new jail. Likewise, I think that at the state level, we need to make sure that we push forward uh, alternatives to incarceration because the reality is that a neighborhood is not necessarily safer simply because you send people away. And I can tell you that as a former police commissioner, uh, commissioner that the police officers that themselves will tell you that this recycle, this revolving door of incarceration is not working. We need new ideas, and it's not about being soft or tough on crime, it's about being smart on crime, and I believe that I have done that. The, uh, the woman in our state who coined the phrase smart on crime is our Attorney General Kamala Harris. And the reason that Kamala Harris has endorsed me in this race is she knows that I've been someone who, as a former criminal prosecutor and as a civil rights attorney, has been smart about how we think about criminal justice issues. Uh, a few weeks ago, I want to thank David for supporting my resolution at the Board of Supervisors that supports Proposition 47. Proposition 47 would ensure that nonviolent and non-serious felonies get knocked down to misdemeanors because this is just a smarter way in how we manage our crime. Uh, we have to make sure that we we have a criminal justice system uh, that is dealing with violent offenders, but ensuring uh, that young people, particularly young men of color, are treated fairly and that we are not using our jail and prison system uh, and investing in that system rather than investing in schools. Uh, this is why I'm also proud to be endorsed by Supervisor Malia Cohen, because the two of us worked together and led the fight to make sure that our local stop and frisk policy that was proposed by Mayor Lee was not something that would continue on as policy. We need to bring our communities together to figure out how we are smart on crime, and the folks who are doing this in our community have supported me in this race. Big hot button issue right now is domestic violence, especially in the sports world. Um, what are each of your thoughts on whether somebody is accused of domestic violence and not charged and remains in their position, whether it's in sports or in public office? Supervisor Chu, start. Well, I certainly think that the 49ers made a significant mistake when they allowed one of their players uh, to continue to play while an investigation was ongoing. I know that David also agree with that, agrees with that. But I think the bigger issue here is how do we as elected officials stand up for victims of domestic violence? And this is an issue that David Campos and David Chu have a significant disagreement with. We have a sheriff in our city who pled guilty to domestic violence who continues to remain as the top law enforcement officer in our city, responsible for administering programs for hundreds of convicted batterers. We did not 
as a city send the right signal when David Campos and a couple of his colleagues decided to keep their crony, Ross Mayor Cramey, in office, someone who is supporting David in this race. There is a saying about how important it is you view us by who we stand with, and unfortunately, David Campos stood with Ross Mayor Cramey. Supervisor Campos. Well, let me say this. Uh, I stand uh, with Patty Villasalma, who is the president of the California National Organization for Women that just endorsed me. And as Patty said, I think it is actually outrageous that David Chu and his billionaire friends are trying to politicize the issue of domestic violence. Uh, where was Ron Conway, who just wrote a check for $50,000 for you uh, to defeat me, uh, when the state was trying to take away uh, protections to victims of domestic violence? You know, this, this issue of domestic violence is a pretext it's something that you're using to score political points that doesn't help women. I'll tell you one thing. He talks about me, criticizes me, and yet in the same vein, he has endorsed another member of the Board of Supervisors who cast the same vote for the same reason. I saw Ron Conway yesterday uh, uh, go up to this member of the board, uh, hug this member of the board. He had no problem with that member of the board. When it comes to me, he's going to spend $50,000 on domestic violence. The thing about this issue is that we don't need hypocritical acts by politicians to actually further the issue. We want real conversations, not political points, which is what you're trying to score, and it's not uh, the right thing to do for women or any victim. All right, I want to find out how much longer we're, we're going to go. We have five more minutes. Do we have time for a couple more questions? Do we have time for a couple more questions? Okay, because I want to make sure I keep everybody on time here. And the candidates will be able to provide closing statements to wrap up all the, we've had a lot of really interesting <laughs> discussions tonight, uh, but I wanna switch gears now because we have some other issues we wanna talk about. Renewable energy, what can this city do to be better about reaching the governor's greenhouse gas goals? Mr. Supervisor Collins. Well, I actually think that the most important piece of legislation that the city has seen in its history to actually address that issue is the legislation that I introduced and passed at the Board of Supervisors, creating community choice aggregation. And that passed with a super majority of the Board of Supervisors, and thank you, David, for supporting that. And I think that if we are committed uh, to, to fight climate change, that we need to make sure that we challenge PG&E's monopoly in San Francisco. We need 100% renewable energy, and I am here to say that unfortunately, even though the law was passed, PG&E is doing everything it can to fight against that. We have a model for actually making clean energy a part of uh, daily life in San Francisco, and we should give the, the ratepayers of San Francisco the choice to actually decide uh, whether Clean Power SF is their choice or PG&E. Uh, if you want results, I have proven that results can be obtained. We need that kind of leadership in Sacramento. So, I was happy to support David Campos uh, in the community choice aggregation fight. Unfortunately, I think it's an example of his failure in leadership because, as we all know, this is a policy that has not been implemented yet. Uh, it is not in effect. Um, it has not, it's, it's actually not, we passed a law and nothing has happened. So unfortunately, um, it's one thing to talk about things, but I'm looking for the result. At the end of the day, I've passed a half a dozen first in the country pieces of environmental legislation uh, to make sure that we're phasing out toxic chemicals in nail salons, to making sure um, I, I'm drinking out of a refillable water bottle because we're phasing plastic water bottles out of public properties. Um, I took on uh, the Yellow Page phone book industry. It was a $16 billion industry. Mo we moved for groundbreaking leg legislation here in San Francisco, and, and David Campos is actually taking thousands of dollars of contributions from AT&T, which fought on the other side. And this is why I'm proud to be endorsed by the lead conservation voter for the work and the fight that I've done in the environment. I've been asked to remind our candidates not to make personal attacks. So as we go forward, I know you guys are friends too. So, all right. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. All right. This is about, education is a big, big deal for everybody. So what about restoring funding for public higher education beyond Proposition 30? Also, do you support reforming Proposition 13? 
Let me start with the answer. So uh, the answer to both is yes. Uh, Proposition 30 was something that was absolutely critical for us to uh, to ensure that for at least the next few years we're going to have um, some level of funding in our public education. But we need to do more, and it's going to take a lot of work to build that consensus. Building consensus around taxes is incredibly difficult, but it is something I have done, I've delivered on. When we reformed business taxes here in San Francisco, we went from double-digit unemployment, tens of thousands thousands of folks out of work to the creation of 70,000 jobs in San Francisco over the past four years, as well as $300 million of additional revenues to go to our kids and our families as we move forward. And I'm proud to be the candidate endorsed by the Parent Political Action Committee that knows that I have been delivering for parents. On the issue of Proposition 13, I do support reforming Prop 13. Again, this is a very difficult subject that's going to require uh, someone who has the experience of bringing people together and not just talking about it. And that is my record. Supervisor Campos. The people who know the importance of education, the teachers, the paraprofessionals, the educators are behind me because they know that I know firsthand how important education is. I wouldn't be here without the public school system. But when it comes to education, you have to ask yourself, who is going to actually be able to hold corporations accountable in Sacramento? Because unless you're willing to do that, there will be no Prop 13 reform. And I think that there is a very real difference between David Chu and me when it comes to corporations. David Chu is working right now on a piece of legislation that is leaving on the table $25 million in back taxes that are owed to the city by a major corporation. He also is responsible for giving tens of millions of dollars in tax breaks to Twitter. Who do you think is actually going to go to Sacramento and stand up to those corporations? Someone who keeps giving them tax break after tax break or someone who's not afraid to say you have to play by the same rules as everyone else? All right, we have time for one more question. And again, I'm asking, the league is asking, that we not make personal attacks on each other. So final question before closing remarks. What is your top legislative priority for your first year and long-term priorities? Supervisor Campos. Well, I think that the issue of affordability and housing is has to be the top priority for any person who represents San Francisco in the state legislature. Uh, the first thing that I intend to do is to reintroduce the Ellis Act measure, uh, the reform measure that was supported by all the members of the Board of Supervisors, Senator Leonard and, and Mayor Lee, to actually amend the Ellis Act so that before someone starts abusing the Ellis Act that they actually hold on to property for five years before they can invoke it. I think that's the, the very least that we should do with the Ellis Act. But the second thing is that I want to prioritize housing for middle income and low income people. The reality is that the middle class is being pushed out of San Francisco. And it's being pushed out because of the policies that have been led in City Hall, uh, including policies that President Chu has supported. The reason why the, the other campaign has more money, more corporate money, than any other campaign in the state of California is because they are afraid that when I go to Sacramento, I will stand up for our middle class and working class. So both David and I, uh, I think, agree that affordable housing is the top priority for us moving forward. But the fact of the matter is, I've been moving forward an agenda around affordability for six years. He's been talking about it, but has only started working on it during this campaign. He voted against 21,000 units of new housing in the city, including public housing including low-income affordable housing. When I go to Sacramento, the first thing that I want to do, I do support the idea of reforming the Ellis Act, but we need to bring back to San Francisco the $100 million a year that we lost when the state of California made decisions in the last couple years to cut that funding. It's going to take a lot of work to get that done, uh, but again, the consensus that I've built year after year as we've been building housing and affordable housing for low-income residents, as we've been rebuilding public housing, as we've been building housing for the diversity of San Francisco, housing that David Campos has been voting against and fighting. Um, this is my priority, and I'm going to continue to fight on a record of how I have continued to deliver. 
All right, now we come to the candidates' closing statements, but I first wanna remind you that if you are not registered to vote, please register right away and urge others to register. The actual deadline is October 20th. If you've moved, you need to register at your new address. So we will do the closing arguments, closing statements in reverse alphabetical order and each candidate has two minutes. So I'll start with President Chu. So first of all, uh, Cheryl, I wanna thank you for your moderating. David, thank you for being here. And I wanna thank all of you for caring about the future of our city and the future of our state. Today, San Francisco, we are stronger than we were when David and I came into office. Six years ago, we had double digit unemployment and thousands of folks were out of work. And I worked to build a consensus to help create the 70,000 jobs and the lowest unemployment rate that San Francisco has had in our history. We started six years ago with massive budget deficits. And I worked to build a consensus to balance budgets and to make sure that today we have the healthiest budget we've had in the history of our city with a social safety net for the most vulnerable in our communities. Six years ago, we weren't building any housing whatsoever. And today we're moving forward with a pipeline of about 50,000 units of housing that that I have been able to move forward. Unfortunately, David during that time period um, fought us on a job creation agenda even though he did nothing uh, to create jobs. He and his allies fought us on how we've been trying to balance our budget. He voted against 21,000 of the housing units we have. I've been trying to move San Francisco forward. Unfortunately, he's been trying to move folks backwards. And David and his supporters have been trying to divide our city. They refer to many of our neighbors who work in technology as nominal San Franciscans. They've been fanning the flames of division. Uh, their supporters are the ones who are throwing rocks at the Google buses, who are trying to kick commuter shuttles off the streets of San Francisco. We need leadership that unites us and moves us forward, not divides us and sends us backwards. And this is why, at the end of the day, I've been endorsed by four dozen elected officials, including our Attorney General Kamala Harris, our Lieutenant Governor uh, Gavin Newsom, our US Senator Dianne Feinstein. This is why close to 30 labor organizations have endorsed me, including school employees, including food workers and janitors and building trades and folks who care about public safety and firefighters. This is why the San Francisco Chronicle, the LGBT newspaper, the African American newspaper, and the Chinese newspaper have endorsed me. And I would love to ask for your support so we can continue to move our great city forward rather than backwards. Thank you so much. Thank you, President Chu. Supervisor Campos. We are at a crossroads. The policies that David Chu touts as successes have brought us to the point where on one hand we're the wealthiest city in the country and we have the largest inequality of any major city. We have inequality that rivals countries in Africa and other parts of the world. If you believe that that inequality is acceptable, you should vote for David Chu. If you believe that Ron Conway and other tech billionaires are not paying enough, uh, that, they, they, that they need to, uh, to pay less in taxes, as David seems to believe, then you should vote for David Chu. But if you believe that San Francisco needs to take care of its middle class, that we actually need to build housing that's actually affordable by regular people, not the $5 million condos that are coming out of City Hall, if you believe that we need to protect our diversity, that we need to have a place for artists to live in San Francisco, then I ask you to join this movement. It's not a campaign, it's a people's movement to take the city of San Francisco back, to bring San Francisco to the point that we remember that it is working people and middle pe middle income people that built this city. And the reason why the corporations and these billionaires are siding with David Chu and spending hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars on his campaign is because they are afraid that they know that I will stand up against them and say, play by the rules as everyone else, and make sure that regular people are not forgotten. I want to be your representative in Sacramento because I know that I will make sure that your, your interests, not the corporate interests, uh, are represented. This is a clear choice between David Chu, a corporate Democrat, and a progressive Democrat, David Campos, who believes that the underdog, people who struggle, they need a voice in government too. Join our movement. We are 33 days away from victory. People power beats money every single time.
And there you have it, a very difficult choice between our two Davids here. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much. And also, before you go, uh, we're going to wrap this up. I want to thank the League of Women Voters, our partner organization, the University of California, San Francisco, and our media partner, San Francisco Government Television. Our thanks to the candidates for participating, and thanks to each of you for spending your evening with us. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here with us. Um, inform yourself about your choices for November the 4th, and we have a meet and greet with all the candidates on October 23rd. You can find information about that on the League of Women Voters website. Thank you for coming, and remember to vote. Have a good evening.